Well, uh, I wasn't going to say anything, you know, everybody's hungry, wanting to eat and everything, but uh, they convinced me to say a word or two. Uh, you know, council here have been uh, the last kind of the vice chairman view of the gay set. Uh, different uh, cities and towns that uh, we were invited to council proclamation proclaiming Kokopa, September of Kokopa month. Um, I know Rosa, I don't know if she's here, but me and her have been attending most of these uh, interviews, interviews of paper, radio stations, back and forth. And uh, we had an elder that went to San Luis and uh, she was a part of that when they, uh, they proclaimed September as Kokopa month. Uh, she's been around for a while. Uh, she rose so as we walked out left and said she was uh, kind of overwhelmed that uh, that the city, San Luis, you know, recognizing the tribal members here and saying that proclaiming September as Kokopa month. She said she was just overwhelmed that something like that, the tribe being recognized. Uh, I know we're celebrating 100 years, but we've been here longer than that, 300,000 years ago, back and forth, in the Gulf, through here, migrating back and forth. Um, it's so, so much that we had. Um, venturing back and forth, at the time there was no boundaries to place this one area until the United States put a border there and said, okay, this is the United States, this is Mexico's side. And they split some of our relatives in half. You know, half of the United States become United States citizens and the other half Mexican citizens. So we still have ties, believe it or not. We still have ties. We overcome, I guess, uh, the indifference with uh, the federal governments and they are having difficulty with their uh, Mexican government. But all in all, we're all coca uh, I know, uh, I think Bill kind of said it, that the chairperson also said, yeah, this is 100 years, but we've been here longer than that. But as we continue to the next century, 100 years, 200, I hope we will continue to be, uh, kind of look back to how it was, how we grew up, at one time back in the 60s, I think it was 64, maybe I'll do it before that. The United States proclaimed that the Kokopa tribe was the poorest Indian tribe of the United States. Um, at one time, the federal government came in and put the uh, privy. At the time, we didn't have privy. That means outhouses. That established something. And uh, proclaiming uh, the land, so even before that, a few tribal leaders wanted to be the land for themselves and the people, their family. So somehow they work out, not the Christian people, that kind of sits at the side. We're limited in our education back then, English. And somehow we had the federal government, the president of the United States, to recognize it and to proclaim the land, the executive, to addressed the lands of the Kokopa, give us recognition. From that day forward, we have been growing and growing and growing. I think kind of deal kind of mentioned a little bit. How about the building? Even before that, we set aside. You know, the council back then made that stance that, you know, we want this for our people. Maybe gaming was something new at the time. Dingo was something that was uh, addressed. Some people didn't want it. It was evil. Can't have it. Anybody. Hey, here we are today. And we have turned around. And I think the federal government kind of thought, ah, uh, they'll never make it. They can't run nothing. They can't operate nothing. They don't have the ability. But we proved them wrong. We're kind of self coming out carry came about. But we have done that before. For our people. The people that we had before us, the council before that had a dream, and they kind of looked at it and said, okay, we want this. And don't bow down to the federal government or even the state. I remember gaming, that was a part of that at the beginning that uh, they wanted no gaming on the reservation. 
So we had a proposition prop. We fought. We fought hard. And we, not only the Kokopod, but other tribes, we band together and we fought hard. And we went out to the community to support. And they have. Summerton, San Luis, the city of Yuma supported us. The people, the non tribal members supported us because they know that the casino is a job for them and provide help. And so the game, then the, uh, that fight isn't over. It's always, we have another go, go around in our casino, the compact, we don't really renew. And it's a battle all over. It's not really secure. And the tribes kind of band somewhat, and others kind of want their own way. And I, I, we all band together and said, hey, you know, we're trying to bring all these people that have walked out. Because the old saying, divide and conquer. And that's the way they, they do things. So if we united, united, we can overcome anything. So I really appreciate the people that are here. And I hope the younger people remember this so they can carry it on the next 100 years or even beyond that. So thank you very much.